Hello, today we are going to learn about the classification of computers. In this session, we will discuss the difference between the computer and calculator, the classification of computers according to their sizes, and the forms of different computing devices. First of all, calculator. You know, the calculator is the root for this whole evolution of computer technology because in those era in those times when computer didn't exist and the calculator was the only source to do the mathematical calculations and operations people needed something much more powerful a much more powerful tool to do the complex numerical and mathematical operations so that's why computer has evolved over the period of time and today we have the most advanced version of computer at our home so the term computer can apply to any programmable device that can run the variety of program in it and calculator is one of them all computers can be used as calculators because a computer has all the programming and functioning that a calculator has but all cal calculators cannot be termed as computers because a computer does much more than a calculator does now the difference between computer and calculator by definition a calculator is just a handheld device to do the math operations and some scientific math operations but on other hand a computer is a multi-purpose device which performs the functions of calculator it does some other complex calculations which are impossible on calculator and so many other things what is included in so many other things that you know better because you use computer every day, right? Now, in terms of speed, the calculator is fast but the computer is faster. Now, in terms of accuracy, if calculator is good, then computer is very good. Now, in case of memory, calculator's memory is very limited. It can store only a few functions and programs but a computer which has a large memory and it can store so many movies, applications, games, files, documents and so much. Now, uh, in case of operations, calculator can do the arithmetic and logical operations but a computer can perform the arithmetic operations, logical operations and some other complex programs. Uh, the functioning. Uh, calculator can, func can do the one function at a time but a computer can perform so many functions in the same instant the programming of calculator is limited but a computer's programming is extensive now the classifications of computer according to their sizes uh, which has supercomputer mainframe computer mini computer and microcomputer in which the supercomputer is biggest or the largest in terms of size but microcomputer is the smallest or rather compact in terms of size now the first supercomputer it is a supercomputer in terms of speed data storage capacity and of course in terms of size and even in cost because it cost hundreds and thousands or even millions of dollars and as you can see in pictures uh, a supercomputer can fill a large room or even a whole floor or even a building. Uh, in the first picture, there is the supercomputer uh, of NASA. Uh, a supercomputer is a composed of multiple high performance computers and it is uh, integrated a uh, supercomputer of so many uh, small computers which are working in parallel as a single system. The supercomputer has evolved to do the uh, complex uh, numerical problems and mathematical operations. Uh, it is used in space exploration, earthquake studies, weather forecasting, nuclear testing and so many other things. Uh, all in this areas, the, num the numerical problems or numerical oper operations are integral part of it. So that's why supercomputer makes it easier for them. Or, and supercomputer is integral part of all these areas. Now, the next one is mainframe computer. The mainframe computer 
is also a big one but still a smaller one than the supercomputer it can also fill uh, the uh, entire room the entire floor they are huge in terms of size as you can see in pictures but uh, they are mainly used uh, to store the data to do the data mining data analysis and all that tasks uh, while the supercomputers uh, were used to do the computer to do the computing thing right now uh, the large companies large organizations hospitals uh, use the mainframe computer where the number of transactions in a day or in a year are very large in numbers uh, so they need the mainframe computer to store the data, to analyze the data, to do the data mining and all these activities. The basic difference between supercomputer and mainframe computer uh, is the type of working. The mainframe computer can do all the functions in the same instant, but a supercomputer uh, does only a few functions at a time. It uses all its energy and power to do that uh, few functions and that's why the speed is highest the supercomputer speed is highest now uh, there is another difference that is a mainframe computer supports all kind of operating systems but a supercomputer supports only the Linux and some other operating system that are similar to Linux next one is the mini computer these mini computers are also called mid-range computers which are used by small firms and businesses uh, mid-range computer as the name suggests they fall in the mid-range of the mainframe computer and micro micro computers uh, they are actually uh, smaller than the mainframe computers and bigger than the microcomputers. Uh, even in terms of cost and data storage capacity, uh, this uh, analogy applies. And uh, these are not used for the single use. Let's take an example for it. Uh, suppose there is a big organizational firm which has so many departments that has production department, r and department, marketing department, finance department, human resource department and so on. In this, the production department, it has its separate mini computer which records all the transactions that are taking place to do the production. Uh, it records the supply, the finished output, the raw materials and all that. So, the mini computer does not handle the all transactions of an organization but it handles a department, a specific department in the firm. Uh, if you want to find uh, which transactions have taken place in month of July, then it's easier uh, if there is any computer available in the production department. So that's how it works. There are some popular mini computers that are given here that you can read on the screen. Now, the next one and the last one that is microcomputer. Uh, it is very unfamiliar name, right? But this computer type is the most familiar to us, to us, the general user. Uh, uh, the smartphone of yours, the tablet, the personal computer, or the laptop, these are all the microcomputers. They are the cheapest compared to the mainframe computers, supercomputers, mini computers, obviously, right? Because they cost millions and billions. But uh, these computers that we use, they are not that costly. These are specially designed for the entertainment purpose, education purpose and the work purposes. The companies that manufacture the microcomputers are Dell, Apple, Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, Lenovo, etc. And this field of microcomputers is very lucrative nowadays. The examples of microcomputer are the gaming tools. Uh, which are used to play games this PDA device this the music system of your car and this GPS tracker system smartphone calculator tablet laptop and this is palm top 
uh, which is not in use today as it has become obsolete and now the forms of different computing devices that is wearable PC, smartphone, personal computers, desktop computers, notebooks, that are laptops, networks, personal digital assistants, that is PDAs, workstations and servers. These are in the rank of their storage capacity where wearable PC is weakest one and the servers are I mean servers have the highest storage capacity. Yeah. Um, we will uh, learn about them in detail further the first one that is my sorry personal computer uh, the personal computer a computer designed for the general use by a single person a single person who can use it for you can it personally it can be your desktop your laptop your tablet your smartphone your pda device right they are uh, first microcomputers. I mean, they f they were first known as microcomputers. Then this whole classification has taken place. Now, the other one is the desktop computer. Desktop computer. Uh, they are not designed for portability. Of course, you can move the desktop computer from one room to other, from one place to another. But you cannot carry the desktop computer in your bag every day, right? So they are not that uh, easily portable and you have to set this desktop computer in a permanent location. They have the more power, more storage and versatility um, compared to its cost. And, uh, it has a very wide range of its prices. Uh, you can find a desktop computer in a lowest price range or even a highest price range too. Another one is the laptops or notebooks. Why are they called notebooks? It is pretty evident from the picture as you can see there are four Dell laptops but they look like a notebook right that's why they are called notebooks uh, they are portable computers as you can carry them in your bag your laptop bag they are they are, they integrate the display uh, the display is uh, similar to the desktop monitor a keyboard and a trackpad that is a trackball uh, which is similar to your mouse in the desktop computer and it includes the computers it includes the components of CPU that is processor memory and the hard drive and it is battery operated uh, as you have to charge it again and again from time to time like you have to charge your mobile phone and then and then and then only it can run the next one is the networks uh, networks can be called the younger version or rather younger brother or sister of the notebooks uh, because they are smaller than the laptops. They are even cost effective. They are almost half of the price of the laptop and their internal components are also less powerful than the laptops. That's why they are very suitable uh, by if we call them the you know younger version of notebooks now the next one is personal digital assistant that is pdas pda devices they are tightly integrated computers uh, which can perform only a few functions uh, they use the flash memory instead of uh, the hard drive uh, to store the data they don't have keyboards because it's not feasible to set a keyboard on this smaller device so that's why they use the touch technology they are smaller than the paperback novel but they are slightly bigger than your palm your hand and they are quite lightweight with a reasonable battery life this pds have become obsolete nowadays because uh, the tablets and smartphones have uh, effectively replaced them uh, everything that a PDA can do, uh, all its features are included in your smartphone. Now, the next one that is workstation. Uh, this kind of computer setups looks unusual but not unfamiliar. You might have seen such kind of setups somewhere, right? 
it is just a desktop computer operated by a single person which has a powerful processor, additional memory, that is extra memory and enhanced capability of performing a special group of tasks which is used in 3D graphics and mechanical design, game development, engineering, simulation, animation and rendering of images and mathematical plots. This kind of workstation uh, you might have seen where the tradings of shares and commodities are taking place, you know, the share market because they have to keep an eye on everything at the same instant. They have to keep an eye on commodity market, share market, gold market and at the same time they have to attend the calls of their clients, they have to make the transactions. So uh, this kind of setup is very useful there. Now the next one is the servers. As their name suggests, they serve to the risk request. Um, a computer that has been optimized to provide services to other computer over a network. Uh, the people they serve are called the clients. Um, if you can understand this, the work of server by an example. Suppose you want to use your Facebook account, then what you will do? You will go to the Facebook site, you will type your username and password, right? Uh, and then you will click on the sign in. Then your computer will send a signal or rather a request to this server of Facebook. The server then it will check in its memory that if the username and password are matching, if they are, then uh, it will return your request by opening your Facebook account and then you will be able to operate your Facebook account. And with each and every click here on your Facebook, uh, your computer will send the request to server and the server will give you the answer back. So that's how the server works. Uh, you know, Facebook is a largest social networking size, so it has the largest servers too, to, you know, uh, facilitate so many customers in the same time. Uh, you, you always see when you are on Facebook, there are some, your, some of your other friends who are doing the Facebook too. So how these things work? If you are doing Facebook, then how your friends are able to do? It's because of their servers. It's because of their serving, serving ability to serve so many people in the same instant. Uh, you know this this kind of thing. Uh, it creates problem in the in the site that is IRCTC, that is Indian Railway site. Uh, the Indian uh, Indian Railway site is able to serve only two hundred people at a time. But if the load or if a traffic increases more than two people then the site is jammed or blocked right so that's why the server plays an important part when it comes to the sites uh, the servers have powerful processors and lots of memory and large hard drives facebook is the biggest social networking sites so just so just imagine uh, its memory its storage how powerful it would be the server because it has to store so many accounts so many information in those accounts so many chats and all that now the next one is variable computer as the name suggests they can be wear on your body they are common they are common computer application that are integrated into watches cell phones visors and even clothing in the picture you can see that is iWatch, this is the iWatch, iBangle and this is the jacket which has so many variable computer on it. Uh, there are variable computer in form of computer clothing, smart watches and fabric pieces. This variable computer are useful uh, in, in medical uh, terms too. Suppose if you want to uh, if you want to measure your heartbeat or pulse, then such kind of softwares and applications can be integrated into a watch and your heartbeats and pulse can be measured in it. Isn't it useful? Now, the next one is the smartphone. Smartphone does not need an introduction because you all know what a smartphone does. 
from the start of your day uh, you woke up you always wake up with the alarm which is set in your smartphone then all kind of things uh, which is even for time pass or while checking your gmail or facebook or whatsapp you are using smartphone so smartphone is an integral or rather crucial part of your life now the embedded computers this is something different with because this is a part of machine or device and a program or a function that is installed in this machine in its non volatile memory and it cannot be reset or rebooted or re rewritten this kind of software cannot be modified the example of it can be a washing machine or a dvd player in washing machine there are so many functions so many buttons on it right for drying for washing washing for 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes so if you press for 20 minutes 15 minutes the computer actually the program in this washing machine will perform according to that way if you want a normal wash it will give you a normal wash same goes with dvd there is a program that is installed in it and it for acts only on, only for the dvd player the control the central processing unit that is used in this devices uh, are specific for, for this devices only and they can be slower and cheaper than the other cpus in our regular computers and laptops and four wheeler a car that is full of this embedded computers it has a music system uh, gps tracker system and so many other systems which are the embedded embedded computers thank you